on the westernunion.com VIP lounge. It's 106 KML, your girl Shay Diddy here, and I have the pleasure of sitting there. I should actually let you interview me because you're a professional. Oh. Kiki Paul is in the you building. you a professional. Don't me? play. No. So, so appointment 10 a.m. Oh, yeah. that's. I mean, that's for the nails. <laughs> that's nail, an inside so. joke. That's an inside joke. Sorry we went back. We old besties, y'all. Well, I am like, glad to hear that you're getting back to the music. Yes. Now, let's talk Thanks. about your first single off this new proje project. Yes, so Enemies. Okay. Enemies is the first single, and Enemies is pretty much my story of my first experience with unrequited love. Okay. I found, or I should say of what I thought was love, mm -hmm. and I found myself willing to do, willing to even be negative in order to get some type of a response for this person. Yeah. And that's pretty much how Enemies was birthed. Um, you know, it's just about experiencing love that you can't have and it ends up turning you into a person that you don't want to be to the point where you'd rather be enemies if yeah. that meant you can get some type of attention from this person. Have you done that before with somebody? Definitely. Girl, definitely. recently or this like from your childhood? Not my childhood, but my young adulthood. Okay. Um, definitely where, you know, I think it's normal to feel that way because it's really not about me wanting them love wanting me wanting them to love me it's really about me wanting to be in control yeah that was ultimately the issue that i found out it wasn't really about that person it's about me wanting to control every outcome of everything yeah and i just needed to learn to let go yeah. everything not gonna turn out the way you want it to be but that doesn't mean it turned out wrong yeah it just means it's going somewhere different but i would get so hell bent on this storyline it has to be it's like going this. to be this and then we're going to go here and it's going to be there and then this is going to be my life and it's like but no you're ever changing yeah. so the life you think you want to have now it may not even really be the life you you want to have and it's yeah. definitely not the life you're you know I mean that you probably should have because we can't even imagine what god has prepared for us right you know it's not yeah. even fathomable for us so yeah. i had to just really learn in that moment where it was about loving myself. I was really the unrequited love I was seeing in him was mm -hmm. the unrequited love I was having with myself. I wasn't I was not loving myself. I was denying myself. Right. Oh my God, you just gave me up. I feel like she was talking about my life right there. Uh, girl, Jeez. we go through it all the time though. <laughs> right. Seriously, it con I mean it's a constant a thing, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Because we everything that we're around tells us that this validates you and this validates you and this validates you. So it's easy to get caught up in the lie. Right. And like, oh, wait a minute, if I don't have this, am I still validated? Yeah. But that's just the ego, which yeah. is not me. I'm connected to God. Right. This doesn't affect me. Because I know I'm always constant. No matter if it's this way or that way, what I create here is eternal. And that's the point. Right. You know, that's the real point. Yeah. And that's what we got to focus on. But when we get so focused on ourselves and we get so in love with the, the uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The material. Yeah. That's when it gets, it's so easy for it to happen. But She's like, it's so easy. It's so easy for it to Girl, <laughs> right. it's so easy. But you just, you practice. Like for me, I, I do my yoga. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I do my meditation and I do my music. I create. Mm -hmm. Those are the things that make me feel free. Those yeah. are the things that make me feel able to enjoy life mm -hmm. without limitations. Right. And that's ultimately what I feel like my point is, you know, in all that I do mm -hmm. is to spread the knowledge I've been given. You know, I feel like I grew up very kind of quickly in a analytical way just because I grew up in, you know, the entertainment industry. Yeah. But there are a lot of things I haven't experienced. So a lot of my situations are me matching the wisdom, which is other people's experiences, with my own. And I'm like, oh, this is what they meant. I want to tell my peers. Yeah. I want to tell my peers, like, this is what your, what, I know when your auntie say that, whatever like that, like, I know that too. Or I went through this because I was, I was working at 10 years old and I had dynamic shifts early or this, then the third. Like, I've learned a lot of things very quickly. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it's, it would be a disservice to not share that in my art some way yeah. in my you know I'm getting ready to write my first book and I'm really excited because I always want to write a book but I never knew what I wanted it to be about yeah and I kept thinking on the surface of me you right. know it's about me you know what I mean but that didn't excite me so I'm like I'm thinking that it's a memoir but it's not a memoir so the years would go by and the years would go by and I realized right when I did Cinderella which was I guess that was, oh my gosh, I'm about to be 23 year, twenty three this year, so that was two You're still years a ago. baby, girl. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, damn, she just said 23? Go ahead. I know she two gave me up right now, right? <laughs> girl, <laughs> quit playing. Mm -hmm. We ain't going to say the age, but go ahead. Black Send don't crack, up. Asian don't raisin. You, know you got double girl. whammy. Tell double them. whammy, baby, looking Tell five them. years old right now. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, so. Yeah, so when I was 21, it came to me. Yeah. It's not about you, girl. It's about spreading what you know. Yeah what you've attained to get to where you are that people may not be privy to yeah. and that may they may take shame from. Right. Guess what? Me too. This happened to me too. I've suffered with depression. I've suffered yeah. with anxiety. I've suffered with breaking the patterns of my parents yeah. and discussing this with them. I've struggled with going through problems with, with my parents. You know what I mean? Like, 
my mother's been my manager most of my life. She's just started being my mother. Oh, wow. So it's yeah. very, th I mean, I, I we all experience our uh, struggles. Just painted with a different background. My mm -hmm. background happens to be the entertainment industry. And it's just about breaking those walls, I feel, and using the platform to really expose the truth that nothing stops you from being who you want to be right? other than you. So do you think that, that this is what your music is also going to do as well? It's going to kind of expose like everything that's going on in your life and how you're feeling currently? And Yes, and hopefully other people's stories too. That's okay. something that I, you know, I'm getting ready to also put out a mixtape. And I feel like my mixtape will definitely be geared toward my experience yeah. over these last few years and what I've learned. And you know, I'll, it'll pretty much encompass that time. Mm -hmm. While the album, I would really want it to more so encompass more of everyone's time. And yeah. I feel like what my generation is going through right now as yeah. a t you know, in totality, not just me, yeah. but to also tell their stories and what I'm observing. In the world in and the world. just in general, what's yeah. affecting people. That's still that way people can actually relate to you as well as on a personal level because yes. they can relate to your music. Yes, that's what it's about. That's what it's about. Now, your sound is kind of a little bit changed from your last album. Yes. I know it's been some time since then. Yes. And this new album, how do you feel like you gradually changed to where you are now? Like, what do you feel about that? I feel like, you know, we're in such a great time with music because you can have somebody like Drake that does, uh, I, you know, I better find your loving. And then next thing you know, he's doing What a Time to Be Alive with Future. Right. Turn up. So I felt like for so long, I kept feeling like, well, I grew up in a church and if I'm not doing straight up r and I'm not really being truthful. I'm right. not being truthful to who I am. But the reality is, as an artist, there's not a genre that you can't do without being still true to music mm -hmm. that's artistry that's changing and shifting and you know allowing your your other influences to be exposed because yeah my influences are brandy and Aaliyah and tlc but my influence We're is also dope. gwen stefani right also britney spears right also you know so many other people that you may not see immediately when you hear the texture of my voice but right. that i'm learning through this album are just important to bring out to allow people to see who i ultimately am you mm -hmm. know what i mean like Everybody has uh, different inspirations and things that have influenced them to make them who they are. Mm -hmm. And I want to be able to showcase that on a wide scale. And like I said, when I look at people like the Drakes, the Donald Glovers, the Rihannas, right. and it, we, they're, they allow things to be shown that, guess what, I can do different types of things Sam, yeah. and still be true to me. Right. I don't have to be one style. Right. You know, so it's just, it's fun to finally find my voice and know that I can put my voice on anything. And do what you want. And do what I, you know what I mean? Yeah. Beyonce can sing an Aerosmith song and it'll always sound like Beyonce. Right. And that's the point. Right. It doesn't matter if it's a hip hop track or if it's a, you know, country beat. Right. And mm -hmm. I honestly think that's actually a great thing, too, because that's when you see an artist who actually has longevity, like the artists that you name who are timeless in right. records today. We, were, I mean, you walked in, we were playing a song from 94. Right. You know what I mean? Right. So right. that's super dope. Now, I know you're working with a lot of people on this project, too. Yes. So let's talk about that. I know you did a video with Ty Dolla, Deja yes. Loaf. Yes, yes. On the remix. Yes, Ty and Deja are on the remix. I'm hopefully going to be doing something else with Deja again. Really? Um, and hopefully, all, you know, me and Ty are very cool, so... Hopefully we'll do another record at some point, but right now I'm definitely working on trying to do something with Dej. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I can mention it, but is she rapping for you? Is she singing a hook? No, it's something for her. Oh, okay. It's something for her, hopefully for the album. But I'm really excited about the idea. Of it. Are you gonna be rapping? You know what? I guess you could say. You know what I mean? I have my my records where I'll be doing my talk. You know what I mean? Stay in my thing. <laughs> I in know. Wait, wait. So wait. When I heard Ty Dolla Sign, what is it? Um. Oh, girl. No, yeah, I girl. did not know it was you. Precious. Yes, I was like, who the hell did he get to say it like this? And I was like, oh my God, that's you? That's me doing my little comedy, my little comedy stuff real quick. <laughs> I was like, I was happy that he let me do that thing right there. He was, was like, perfect. yo, I need you to do something for the album. And I th I'm thinking like, okay, what, you want me to sing on something? Or like what? He was like, no, he's like, I want you to do a skit. And I was like, yeah, I want you to do a skit right before this song. And I'm just like, okay, I'm trying to think about what the skit will sound like. And that's literally all what came up on the mic. Oh, that was awesome. It was perfect, though. I was just like, I'm going to go for it. And the cut-ins throughout the song, I was like, <laughs> damn it. She's amazing. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Thank you. Now, are we going to see you working with Ty on your album anymore? Or Definitely, definitely. I haven't found a record that. Or you know what? I guess I should say I'm not even completely done with the album. Because okay. when I'm done, completely done with the album, I'll give it to a couple of my homies. I'll give it to Ty. I'll give yeah. it to Vic. I'll give it to, you know, B.O.B. Yeah. You know, see which record they may feel like they want to try to hop on. And, yeah. Uh, you know, because I, I feel like it's better that way as, as opposed to saying, forcing somebody to get on this record. I'd rather them feel it. 
feel it. Which song are you feeling? Exactly. I what actually got Rich Homie Kwan on the Enemies remix. Do you? Yes. Girl. Now, speaking of Rich Homie Kwan, I know you were in his video as well. Yes, the most. Yes. How was that? It was really, really dope. I didn't know how it was going to turn out because it was so long before I actually saw the end result. So I was like, I don't know how it's going to look. I, I mean, I just remember how we filmed it. Yeah. But I didn't know what the exact, um, because I know it was going to be very stylistic. Yeah. So I didn't know what type of filter or what type of, you know, ultimate look it was going to have. Right. And so when I saw it, I was just so excited because they really, I liked the way it was shot. Like, Jathan did a really, really great job. Shout Super out to dope. Jathan. <laughs> yeah, he's a director. Was that the first time that you met Rich Homie or when you started working with him? Yes. Because actually we I had only talked, you know, on social media every yeah. now and then. But I'd never met him in person. Um, so that was the first time that we met. Oh, yeah. that's super dope. Now, yeah. I know since then, it seems like Rich Homie is seriously crushing you. Because I know he made you Women Crush Wednesday today. And I saw the kissy faces back, which is probably friendship. Aww. But, like, have you ever thought about dating? You know, for me, I'm the type of person right now where it's just like, hashtag, I don't belong to you. I'm very just <laughs> chilling and vibing and focused on my on my stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm very focused on my music. I'm very focused on just my career in total. You yeah. Know? But I'm always down for friends. I mean, I love friends. So just to clarify, because I'm the queen of friends. Everybody is a friend. <laughs> yeah, not like what that. What I'm saying is like, he's definitely a friend of mine. You he, know what I mean? He's just like a real friend. Yeah, not a real fr friend. Friend. Y'all, get your heads out the gutter. I'm not saying there nothing like that. <laughs> you heard it here first. I'm okay, just saying. Okay, kids? Because when people hear me say friends, they be like, Shay, he's a friend? And I be like, damn. Like, you know what I mean? Kiki is hashtag, I don't belong to you. Focused on her life, okay? She hashtag. Like focused on her life. And you goes. know, a lot of people who do follow you, because, I mean, on your social media, you let people in just your daily lives, getting your hair done, whatever you're doing, rolling around in the car, pulling pranks. And a lot of times people actually see you with Justin, Combs. Oh, yes! <laughs> Justin. I love Justin. That's my best friend. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> y'all about to think. See, she's setting me up. No, I didn't. I want y'all to see no, everything that's going down. I'm to, right these, now. Are, these are the questions that fans really want to know. Because Justin, I've like, known. How long I've known Justin since I was doing True Jackson VP? So I've known him since I was probably like 16 or 17. Okay. And we've been really, I'm very good friends with him. I'm very good friends with Quincy. Yeah, you're good with the family. Love with, yeah, yeah. Very. Very close to them. Kim, I love that family. Yeah. For sure. Okay. So they know me since I was real young. So you're like, basically, that's like family right that's there. That's family. That's family for sure. How did you guys even come together? We met through Diggy Simmons. Oh, wow. Yes, we met through Diggy Simmons. Okay. In New York, because they both lived in New York at the time. In New York? Yeah, in New York at the time, because oh. Diggy lives in New York still, but Justin lives in L.A. now. Well, that's super dope. And I know you did a movie with his brother as well. Yes. So. I mean, we just had to clarify. Now, let's talk about your projects, because that's one thing a lot of people love about you. You are amazing in movies. Oh, my goodness. Thank you. And I know that you were talking about it on your Snapchat. Yes. Pimp. Yes. Girl. Okay. Can I get a pimp impression from you? Because I know you. Oh, well, I, I, I don't know what, what line I could do. or, it, And I'm not in the right vibe and the right <laughs> look. But okay. when you guys see, I'm so excited because it's a real transformation that's going to be happening. Like, I'm really in the gym. They got me working out hard, girl. Well, you know, it's more like a trick of the eye. I'm okay. more so getting leaner. That way you're only seeing really my muscles. So okay. it, in turn, it's going to make me look, you know, buffer, but really just very, very cut. Right. So I'm just, you know, eating a lot, but a lot of, like, protein stuff. Anyhow, mm -hmm. I've been in the gym working hard. You can check out that Snapchat if you want to see, see? Uh, the type of workouts I'm doing, y'all. Keek the Sneak, K-E-E-K-T-H-A-S-N-E-A-K. -E -E Thank you. Wait, you know that Keek the Sneak is a Bay Area rapper. I know, and people always come like, do you know who Keek the Sneak is? Do you know what <laughs> Keek the Sneak is about? I'm paying homage. I'm like, y'all, I'm Keek the Sneak, too. Yeah. I'm a legitimate Keek the Sneak. <laughs> they try to delegitimize me. That's not a real word. Don't deny my Keek. I'm just but saying. anyhow, um, I forgot what I was saying. About the pimp movie. Oh, yes. Yeah. So pimp, um, pretty much it's really a love story. It's yeah. a lesbian love story with the backdrop of the pimp culture. Mm -hmm. So my character Wednesday, she's grown up with her father being a pimp and her mother actually being a prostitute. Oh, wow. Um, and the girl next door is kind of like, you know, they grew up together. And then when they end up growing up, they actually end up becoming lovers. Like that becomes her girlfriend. Right. And... We start out and Wednesday is a pimp, but she's really not making a lot of money. Mm -hmm. So she's trying to figure out a way to try to up her cash flow so she can get her and her girlfriend out there and start a new life. And she doesn't want her mother dragging her down anymore. Yeah. So pretty much you've, you're following Wednesday's life on how she's trying to pretty much up her pimp game, you know, in New York. Mm -hmm. And pretty much get her and her girlfriend out there. And ultimately her girlfriend, I don't want to tell you too much. 
<laughs> but things get rough and things get crazy, and things Wednesday's got to get out of Dodge. Really? Yeah. Going but, it's, I'm, but I'm very excited about it. Oh, that's super dope. Do we have any timeline on when? I'm I'm just about to film it next month. Okay. So, yeah, I don't know. You know, it, the recovery date or the you know what I mean the, I don't know how quickly they're gonna go into post production, mm -hmm. but I start filming in May. Do you know who's playing your girlfriend? Can't we can't go that. there. Can't say. Well, these we're things excited yet. because yeah, just on the storyline, it sounds like it's gonna be a dope movie. It's definitely a different role for me. It is. Yeah, it's well, definitely different than anything I've ever played before. So that's your key focus as far as movie projects right now is pimp. It's pimp as far as movie projects right now. Yeah. Well, that's. Super, I don't know how you keep up with everything because you got so much going on. I really don't. Well, whether pimp it's is a music, project movies. I've been working on for the past three years. Oh wow. So it's actually just now getting made. Um, I, you know, I mean. I think I first found out about, like I said, three years ago, before Brotherly Love, yeah. before, I think right after maybe TLC. So it's just now getting made, which, which I'm very happy. I'm very glad that, you know what I mean, finally we're getting it made. It's something I've been wanting to, wanting to put out. So what's going on with Just Kiki? Congratulations, by oh, the way. Thank you That's so much. That's why I was like, girl, you should interview me. Ah. School me. <laughs> so I'm pretty much working with Telepictures. Like, uh, they're actually... Um, reality under Warner Brothers. Right. So they are the ones that do my show as well as Ellen and The Real. Right. And so pretty much right now we're getting ready to figure out which network we're going to have it on. So that's like where, I, where I'm at right now. But the show is definitely coming back and I'm yeah. really excited because there are a lot of new things that I want to bring to the show as well. So is there a specific network that you want to go to that you're like ideal this well, is where we want to be? No, not a specific one, but just I think we want to do not cable this time, network instead. Network okay. television meaning like ABC, NBC, Fox. Mm -hmm. I don't know which one out of those. Something but, that pretty much but something capture. that capture. Yeah, so we can get up, get, get a lot going. She's all get a lot going. Well, congratulations again because I know you were play, you played Cinderella on yes. Broadway. And also the NAB TV Award. Congratulations oh, on that as well. Thank you so much. I'm so excited about that. And when you first found out that you were getting that award, what was your reaction? How did you take it? Were you like, oh my God. I was yeah, I was I was like really shocked. Like I couldn't believe the type of award that they were, the type of thing that they were uh, congratulating me on. It really? was kind of just like, wow. You know, I think I've been doing, I've been acting so long. Uh, I started when I was nine, mm -hmm. and it's always been very fun for me. You right. know, I've always enjoyed it, especially because I started out with my mom. I started singing in the church with my mom, doing music, then acting. Mm -hmm. And it was always a way for my mom and I to bond and just to get closer. I love doing it, but I also love the process of becoming closer and closer to her each time, like Aww. getting more of her time and things like that. Because my mom was um, often gone when I was a kid. I grew up a lot with my grandmother. Yeah. So I would spend all this time uh, with my mother. So now when I look in someone's achieve, you know, give me an achievement for something like that. Yeah. It's like I don't realize that I've, if, you know, I don't see it that way because these were just fun things that you did that I did and yeah. just to be congratulated on that. It's just like thank you for saying that it meant something. You right. know, that it touched somebody and that it stands for something. It's just really it touches you because you know, that's not why I did it. Yeah. Yeah, you weren't looking for the accolades. No. You did it because you enjoyed doing it. I enjoyed it, it and, I, and thank God that I still enjoy it to this day. Well, that's, you know what I mean? That's yeah. what I'm really happy about. Because I often would wonder, I'm like, oh, what would happen if I didn't like to act anymore? It becomes work, and then it's not funny. Oof, and if I didn't like to entertain anymore. <laughs> right. You know I mean? If I didn't like to, I mean, I don't know what I would do. So. She's like, I don't know what I would do. And that's one thing about how do you stay grounded? Because you have so many things going on, it's pretty much successful in all your different fields. Like, who keeps you grounded? I think uh, my the foundation that my parents planted in me was to always kind of understand and have a sense of community yeah so I always was uh, I always kind of had the understanding that I was doing what I'm doing for more than myself mm -hmm. like my family has always just kind of been like that even when I would like film like after I did a kill in the bee I went to my parents would always have me going to schools talking to kids you know working with organizations mm -hmm. even when I would go to uh, do Medea's family reunion I remember my mom had me go see a school out there and just yeah. to I was homeschooled but she found a way for me to be around my peers and to realize what was going on there and and what was going on with me and understanding how they correlated. Right. She kind of always made me understand that and, uh, you know, always put me around organizations. I used to do a lot of stuff with um, Martin Luther King Jr.'s daughter, Bernice King. Mm -hmm. And I would see up front that people did, when they had platforms, they did stuff with them more than just for themselves. Right. You know, and that always rung true to me in my mind. Mm -hmm. And as I got older, I started to really understand what my parents re meant about the responsibility of having a platform. And making sure, caring yourself, and yeah. And, and making sure that what I'm saying is something that I truly believe in. Right. You know, and so I think that's what always keeps me grounded is that I don't want to take advantage of that. 
And I think that you're great at that, especially because, one, with your show, you do that all the time. And also, you do that on social media where people may not be expecting it. And it's mm-hmm. you pretty much giving people inspirational words and just... Anything. You know what I mean? Just trying to stay mm-hmm. positive, which mm-hmm. I feel like we need a lot more of in today's world. And we feel it when we when we be it. When, when we become it, we yeah. see more of it. Right. And that's the real thing. Right. When we live it and eat it and breathe it ourselves, right. that's when we see it in the world. Be the change. I think Gandhi said this. Be the change you want to see in the world. And it's true. Your perspective change. Like, you know, even when, not to take it deep like this, but when you think about Jesus and his perspective, when, he, when you're talking about when he seen Mary Magdalene or something like yeah. that, you can immediately, he, most people would see a whore. But what he saw was a woman going through change in life. You know, whatever he chose to see was something that was of love and compassion. Right. And so when we start to have more compassion for ourselves and mm-hmm. treat ourselves kinder, immediately something clicks in our mind of seeing another person in a more human way. Right. We immediately understand somebody else's struggle. You know, right. but when we aren't close to ourselves, we don't, you know, sometimes we get caught up, like I said, in life. Right. We don't want to, oh, I don't feel like brushing my hair. I don't feel like doing, I don't feel like getting up and really putting on lotion, whatever. It could be the smallest thing, brushing my teeth, whatever. Put on lotion. You know, yeah. we, we don't want to do those things, and we, then we wonder why we feel bad, yeah. you know. That's amazing. I'm sorry. I'm just sitting here talking about oh. <laughs> soaking up game. Like, girl, I wish I could be so positive like that. Because so many days I wake up and I'm just like, oh my god, here we go again. You know what I, I mean? Know. It does feel like that. And it, it does gets feel like draining. That, it, things can get monotonous. Yeah. So it's all about talking to yourself. That hap- I mean, I remember I was, uh, you know, like I said, I'm getting ready to put out my first book. It's called I Don't Belong to You. Yeah. And I'm talking a lot about it, just about different patterns. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that I started to see in my life that I wanted to change. Mm -hmm. And so I remember I was in a very codependent relationship, and every day I would wake up and do the same thing. We would eat, we would chill, smoke a little bit. It would just be so, I felt as if the life was being sucked out out of of me. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know how to get a handle of it because I didn't understand the concept of depression. Yeah. So I had to ask myself, quiet myself, and realize what what is this about for me? Mm-hmm. What do I enjoy? Let me put my focus on that. And it all became with the first choice of saying, this relationship is not good for me. Yeah. This is not nice to me. Yeah. So I can't do this anymore. Yeah. And you know what else isn't nice to me? Not having boundaries with people in my life. That's not nice to me. You know what? What's not nice to me is my inability to breathe through my anxiety. Yeah. So I'm going to learn how to breathe. You know what's not nice to me is that I don't feel good because of the foods I'm eating. I'm going to try to eat better foods, and I'm going to try to be nicer to me. And then all of a sudden, my perspective of my whole world changed, and all of my dreams seemed easy to reach. They're, like, right here. I'm just like, oh, my gosh, how did I see this? Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it. And that's what it's yeah. about. It's about me saying, guess what? Yours is that easy, too. Right. But it's all about being nice to you. Right. And knowing what it is you want and knowing what it is that's not making you comfortable, what's not making you feel like, that's the hardest part, though, is getting to the know what it is that you that it makes you unhappy and changing that. You know what I mean? She's our girl, preach. It's just preach. <laughs> no, it's, you're right. It's the hardest thing. Now, you said your book comes out in October, right? Yes, it comes out in October. Now, one question I did want to ask. Are you going to talk anything about the TLC movie that you did? Because that was huge when we saw you, you in know that. What? It was incredible. I mean, I can because I'm actually still in the process of writing. Okay. Um. I didn't really think about it. Just because they were so influential, and so it'd be interesting to see your take on it and just playing your role and how that might have influenced you and everything else. I was just curious about it. Yeah. She's like, maybe. No, I would love, I didn't think about, you know, you sometimes don't, like I said, you sometimes don't, I don't know all the time, you know, what people would want to know. Right. You know what I mean? So for you to ask that, that brings up in my mind that, oh, people possibly will want to know about my experience in TLC. Right. And it was quite a, it was quite an experience. Yeah, it but had to I, be. You know, sometimes when you're thinking about the topics that I'm thinking about the topics I want to write about and everything I want to address, right. immediately that did not necessarily come to my mind. Right. But it, there was a lot that went on during that time for sure. I know. Now, speaking of TLC, we are going to play a game right now. I think you'll have fun with I this. I love games. She said, I love games. Girl, I love games. So basically... I call it Shay's emojis. And basically, this is how I talk with my friends. Sometimes when I want to speak cryptic- cryptically, I'll send them nothing but emojis, and most people can figure it out. Yeah, I want to see it. if you can figure it out. Now, all these emojis are about you. They're either your movies, songs, or whatever, so forth, okay? That's fun. She's okay. Like, okay, what is I this? I love that. Greece. Live? Nope. Um, TLC. Yep. Because the waterfalls and TLC. She's like, I. <laughs> Let's see what the next one is. 
Greek slides. See? How'd you know? Did you see this before? <laughs> you funny shit. Are you going to be doing anything with Greece in the future or no? You know, we might go on a cruise together. What? Just Just because we love each other. Yeah, we literally became so close. I know it's crazy, girl. We literally became so close. You know, oh, it becomes, that's super dope. Oh, my gosh. It becomes a complete, you know... It's like going to camp yeah. is what it feels like. You yeah. know what I mean? Or doing a, uh, maybe in a high school drama club. Right. It feels like you spend this so much time with these people and you guys bond over something that no one else can understand, understand mm -hmm. but you guys. And so it always keeps you close. And That's super dope. I love those guys. So we might go on a cruise together. I don't know if we're going to be doing anything rebooted with Grease Live. Yeah. Because it was Grease like Live. It, right. It seems like it was Grease Live. It was Grease Live too. Right. Akilah and the B. Aww. That now, one was a quick one. <laughs> like that. Now, that was kind of like one of those movies that was like, who is this girl? She is amazing. <gasps> and you were so young. Like, I will be talking a lot about that in the book. Will you? Yes, for Aww. sure. And about everything afterwards and how your experience was with that. Definitely. And, and, you know, just my process through transitioning through the motions that I had to develop in order to play that role. You know, yeah. Akilah had to go through feelings of abandonment. You yeah. know, through my life, I've struggled with feelings of abandonment because almost most of my childhood characters struggled with abandonment. Right. My first character that I really played in the film was a movie I did called The Wool Cap, Cap yeah. and my mother was a crackhead. Oh, wow. And so I had to really dig to that place of abandonment. Mm -hmm. And your emotions don't really know that you're kidding. Yeah. You know, and there's, you know, I feel like I would love to have at some point, I feel like there should be therapists on set just to kind of talk the kids out of the transition of that emotion and how it's not really a direct correlation to their lives. Yeah. Because we all have the thing in us where it's like fight or flight. Yeah. And so if, if I repeatedly abuse that emotion, it yeah. can come up in moments that don't make sense. Make sense. Mm -hmm. And so I, I remember as a kid, I would often hear people talking about how like Sean Penn or, you know, these actors that take on these big, deep roles, how yeah. sometimes they would have to take time in between before they did another and I'm like that doesn't make sense I love that I don't see how you can and as an adult I was like well when you play those type of roles and you really embody that character you really embody that character you are taking on their load yeah. I mean it's, it's no way about it the way that you're choosing to empathize you're taking on their feelings their failures their faults their insecurities you have to take it on yeah and sometimes it's hard to shake it off oh, that sounds so hard I'm yes. too emotional for that I'd be crying every time <laughs> yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely, um, but I'm happy that I learned how to do it young. Yeah. You know, it's a tool that I learned how to exercise young because mm -hmm. I feel like, I don't know what I, how it would be if I had to go to that stripped down place and go back up again to just do it back and forth. You know yeah. what I mean? Like that process that you maybe go through when you're entering it to, in, entering into it in like a, you know, college or something. Right. I don't know how that would, I don't know if I would, would be able to do that. What's well, amazing that you can actually do it as a child and learn how to do it and continue to do it as yeah. a yeah. I'm just so thankful for it. I'm thankful to God. She's like, I'm thankful <laughs> you to know, God. You it's, know, it's a tool. Yeah. You can't abuse it. That's so real. Let's see what the next one is. Screen queen. She's like, I got this. <laughs> but these are also quite adorable and cool. <laughs> I really love the layout. She's like, now, Scream Queens, have you already, already finished season two? No, we don't start filming until August, actually. Really? Yes. So I don't even know. I don't even know the storyline. Really? I just know that we're going to be in, in, in a hospital. Uh -huh. I know that Zayday's so smart, she graduated at extreme speed, and now she's a doctor. Uh-huh. Um, extreme speed. Yeah, extreme, literally, that's <laughs> like she two, graduated. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Now she's a doctor. Hey, it's Zayday Williams from Oakland. <laughs> yes. It was so funny because I was like, I wonder if she met Kamaya because she was trying to get enrolled, get in character. <laughs> you know, like, like, Kamaya was like, I ain't heard of no dang on Oakland nachos. <laughs> I'm like, girl, you know that's a TV show. That's hilarious. Okay, well, we're looking forward yeah, to I'm season two. Yeah, I'm looking forward two. to it too, girl. She's like, come on. Ice Age. Aw. Oh, Ice Age. You know what? I'm fin I just finished Ice Age. I Did believe. you? Yeah, Ice Age 5. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. It's so crazy. Yo. She's like, it's so crazy how many there is now, and they get better and better each time. Now, can anything that you can tell us about this one? Yes. Well, this one is about the world is getting ready to end, and then also my character, Peaches, is getting ready to get married. Oh. And so it's kind of how the parents are trying to figure out how to deal with this idea of the world ending. Yeah. And then while at the same time trying to figure out how they can maybe let Peaches go and become her own woman, even mm -hmm. if they don't know if they do or don't have a future. Right. Now, when you started doing voiceover work, was it completely different for you, or was it like... It was, but I used my tools, actually, when I started entering back in music now. Mm -hmm. um, I used my tools from Ice Age, actually, in the studio, because I started to realize what it meant to put my emotion mm -hmm. into 
what you're saying. What I'm saying yeah. on, the on the on the on the record. Yeah. Because you have to do that in animation. And in my first animation with Ice Age, Continental Drift, yeah. I hated my. I mean, I, did you? It was good, but it, you know, I was critical of it yeah. because I felt like I could have been more authentic in my voice. Like I just felt like I could have added more to it. I don't know. You know, you 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 beat you're it always, yourself. You're, yeah. Exactly. And so the second time around, I really focused on trying to get the sound out. And then when I started to record again, I started to use that same mindset. And it really, it, it really taught me how to find my voice well, in music. Yeah, yeah. And it, take you to, it takes you to the next level. I always say yeah. round two is always going to be better because you have the first one is like practice. Yeah. And two, you always, you know what I mean? Absolutely. Let's see what the next one is. Now, she's actually the best one at this game, so... Do you want to know what it is? No. She's like, don't tell me. <laughs> panda, panda. Right? I love pandas. I love her face right now. She's like, I'm going to figure this out. Okay, can you give me a guess? Uh, is it live action? Do you want to know what it is? No. Is it live action? Mm -mm. It is live action? Mm -mm. Oh, it's an animation? What other animation? <laughs> What other? Okay, you can tell me. It is. <laughs> oh, it's live action. <laughs> I'm like, it's animal. She's Dang. Like, <laughs> I was thrown off by the emojis this time. I'm so disappointed in myself. All the animals. Y'all gone it. I literally thought it was an animation or something like that. I forgot that it could be animal. That's Goodness. so adorable. Look at <laughs> I think we have one more. Okay, maybe I could redeem myself. Medea, Bam Reunion. See? She's. Uh, have you thought about doing another Medea film? I would love to do another Medea film. Do you still keep Tyler? <laughs> She's like, what's up? I'll make some free time, even though I got a book coming, a movie coming, a show coming, and oh, another no. season. Girl, That's and good. an album. Now, do, do we have a date yet for the album? I know you're still working on it. I, I mean, I would like to have it come out September, October. Okay. But... I'm kind of pushing it. You know, I'm I'm definitely what you would call a workaholic. Mm -hmm. So if it's possible to be done, I definitely would be the person to do it. But at the end of the day, I want it to be done. Uh, I want it to be put out right. Oh. So. Is there anybody that you want to work with that you haven't worked with yet? Sure, I would love to work with uh, Diplo. Ooh. Um, off the top of my head. I feel like you and Ty can also get together and do a record that would be crazy because yes. he's such a crazy producer. I know. I wonder writer. what type of record. I would want it to be something that's part, that's moving. I was just talking the other day about how, you know, I f there's great music on the radio, yeah. but I feel like not every song makes me want to dance. So you want to dance. So I want to do something that's going to make people want to dance and make people want to move. You want to twerking skills. And I want us to be up in the club. In L.A., no one dances in the I club. hate that. Come I'm like, I want to do something where they ain't got no choice but to. Uh, girl, uh, tell Kamaya to bring you to a club in a bay. We'll show you, girl. Exactly. That's, That's all what I'm we saying. Do. Like, dance and enjoy. You know, I, mean? I want to do something that make people have no choice. Right. But to move. Well, we're excited for this new album. I cannot wait to hear it. The singles you've already put out have been amazing. Oh, my goodness. Thank and you. And they show diversity, so we're all oh, excited thank you. for it. And now, if people want to follow you and figure out and see any updates, like shows, movies, yes. album, where can people find out the most information about you? The most information you can find out at kikipalmer.com, K-E-K-E-P-A-L-M-E-R.com. And then also you can check me out on Instagram, K-E-K-E-P-A-L-M-E-R. But Always, if you want to check out me, like, every 24 hours, you can go on Snapchat. And like I said, that's <laughs> K-E-E-K-T-H-A-S-N-E-A-K. Keep the sneak. There it is. Your girl Shay Diddy, <laughs> Kiki Palmer, S106, KML.